Hey guys, welcome to another video. This one is how to trade cryptocurrencies on Kraken, specifically on Kraken Terminal, which is the advanced way of trading cryptos on the Kraken Exchange. If you wanna go ahead and do this on a smartphone, you'll have to download the Kraken Pro application. This one is for desktop though, so we can go into Kraken Terminal. I'm gonna show you how to choose cryptocurrency pairs that you can go ahead and trade. Then I'll take you through some really common charting techniques that you can use when trading cryptocurrencies and that I did use when I was trading. Then we're gonna look at the order book, what it actually means, how to place orders of different types, and pretty much start to finish, just a really good guide of how to use Kraken Terminal. There are a bunch of videos that I reference in this one. They will all be linked in the description for you, along with all of the timestamps for this video as well, so that you can get to the place that you need. If you are new to Kraken and you want to know how to actually set up an account and also a beginner's tutorial, I do have that. I'll link that in the description for you. I'll also leave the link to Kraken. So if you don't have an account and you wanna get one set up, then you can click that link to go through and set up an account and come through to this page. We're gonna go straight into the more advanced trading features of Kraken though. Like I said, that beginner's tutorial will go through all of these different options, but I'm gonna come through to this icon right here. We're gonna come through to Kraken Terminal, which is the professional way to trade cryptocurrencies on Kraken. We're gonna get rid of the homepage so that it doesn't clutter up the screen. And I've made a few changes to the way that this is laid out. So this may not look exactly the same for you. I'm just gonna change this so to get things set up properly, you can see how things work. You can change these tabs right here. This is probably what it's gonna look like for you when you get started. You'll have the order book right here. You'll have some trades and then you'll have the chart of the cryptocurrency pair that you're trading. You can very easily take these away. Just click the sidebar and then these will be minimized. You can go and switch this icon right here, manual and auto. Auto is when the chart actually can't be moved up and down by yourself. You can move it left and right. The way that it's set out is automatic. You can change this to manual as well. And then if you just press and hold on the screen, you can change this anywhere that you like. I like having it on manual so that I can really get it in the exact position that I want. On the right hand side here, you have the price of the cryptocurrency pair. So right now I'm actually trading Bitcoin against the US dollar. So this is the value of Bitcoin versus the dollar. And you can see right now it's trading at about $37,635 per one Bitcoin. You can also come up and change the theme of this. If you don't really like the look, just come up to this icon right here and you can change all of the color schemes. So you can actually change the colors of the candlestick charts to whatever color that you want. You can also change the text and the action buttons. I'm happy with it as it is though. Let's come through to currency pairs then, like I said. So the chart right now is Bitcoin against the US dollar. You can definitely change this. Come up to this icon here, click this. These are all the cryptocurrency markets on Kraken. So you actually see these and you can scroll down. There are a lot here. You can also search for them. So if I only want to see Ethereum markets, I can type in ETH as the ticker, and then it will give me all of the Ethereum markets here. So we've got Ethereum against the Aussie dollar, Ethereum versus Bitcoin, Ethereum against the Canadian dollar, I can also see Euro, Pound, Yen, US Dollar, and then USDC and USDT. USDC is US Dollar Coin, and then USDT, this is the US Dollar Tether. Both of these track the US Dollar one for one, but they are cryptocurrencies. They're called stable coins. They're actually backed by fiat currency, in this case the dollar, and they track one for one. A lot of people use these to hold as a store of value and to also use to trade against other cryptocurrencies. On the right hand side, you'll also get some great information about the markets of Ethereum versus other products. And you can see some of the movements of the prices here. So just choose the cryptocurrency that you want to trade. Let's keep it simple and just go for Bitcoin. So BTC and on the right hand side of all of these markets, you can add them to your favorites as well. I've actually got BTC against sterling and then against the dollar set as favorites. You can change these as you like. Let's just go through and put Bitcoin against the US dollar. So we'll click on this. You can see now it's actually reloading and loading all of the charts and prices for this market. Once you've got the market that you want up and running, we can come through to the chart. So let's go through all of these different options here. Firstly, you can change the type of chart that you have. Now, I always use a candlestick chart. And when I was trading uh, on the London Stock Exchange, I would always, every single day, use a candlestick chart and really nothing else. You can change it to a line chart. This, in my opinion, gives virtually no information whatsoever. Just gives you the prices, but it doesn't really tell you what is going on. Candlestick gives you an idea of how the trade actually is in the market. 
How candlesticks work is that each candlestick is a period of time. In this case, one hour. You can very easily come and change this to, let's say, a two hour. So now each candlestick represents a two hour trading window. Red represents a down move during that two hour period, and a green represents an up move during that two hour period. You can also see some of the candles have a small line. How candlesticks work is the closing price and opening price will be colored in solidly. Any price moves during the two hour period though will be shown as a line. So actually during this down move, you can see that the price during that two hour period got all the way down here, but it actually finished here. So you can see that the colored in line starts here. So this is the opening price of that time period. This is the closing price of that time period. But during the time period, it swung all the way down to here and it actually went up a little bit as well. But this is the starting and closing price and that goes for every candlestick. I'm gonna go through to a one hour chart though, so change it back to here and now we have it. So the first thing that I want to do is put on some uh, analysis on the chart. So we can come to analysis right here and then I'm just going to put some simple moving averages on the chart. So I'm gonna click this and all of these options will come up. Now the easiest way is just to allow these, but you can change the periods of the moving averages. A moving average is simply taking the closing price of each of the time periods and each of the days for the cryptocurrency and then just averaging it out over that many days. So you can change the period. So this would be a 15 day moving average, 50, 200 and so on. I'm happy to apply this and you can see a few moving averages on here. So we have a shorter moving average here and a longer moving average here. Now, a moving average is just going to give you a very short overview of maybe some areas of support and resistance for the chart. So Bitcoin against the US dollar has been moving up really without taking a breath for a long time. But you can see it actually does bounce along this moving average. So when the price comes down to this moving average, it is bouncing off most of the time. So you may say to yourself that actually the next time the price hits this moving average, which is now, it might be a good time to buy if you're a day trader, because historically over the last few days and months, it has actually been bouncing off that line. So that could be an area where you may want to get in. Now, if you're just buying and holding and investing, this is way less important. Next is Fibonacci. So this is a different type of technique that we can use. It's actually down here in all of these. So you can click this one and you should see retracement right here. So we can click this. Now there are also hotkeys on the bottom as well to add a lot of these drawings. You can come down to the hotkeys here and you can see a lot of different options. So you can actually press these and then it will give you the option. So actually if I just want to draw a Fibonacci, which is a uh, technical analysis, you can just type R on your keyboard and it will bring this up for you. You can also come to the right hand side and it says R here, just click on this. Use this as an indicator for levels. So you start at the top of the trend, so that would be here, and then we can come down to the bottom of the trend, and you can take a specific time period that you want, so I'm just gonna choose this one, and then it's gonna give you these levels. It really attempts to put areas on the chart that will be support and also resistance depending on the move. You can actually see that at the top of this trend, the chart moved down a bit and actually came pretty much off this level. And what is important is the closing price of the cryptocurrency, not the price that it trades at intraday, but the closing price. So we can see from the top of this move that actually this retracement level here, which was the 78%, did actually serve as a very, very strong level of support for the cryptocurrency. If the closing price finished below this level of support, then using Fibonacci, you could see this next level, which would be the 61%, as the next level of support for the price movements. Now, Bitcoin obviously is in an uptrend against the US dollar, so we saw it bounce from this support level and then come up to this level, which now acts more like a resistance to the chart. So this level we would be seeing if it did break through, so if the price keeps going up and maybe comes up to here, we would therefore look at this level going forward as maybe the next level that the chart may go to. Fibonacci definitely cannot predict the future, but it just gives you an idea of particular levels that the price may center around. This is just a guide, of course, but what I'm gonna do is just right click on the chart and then click on remove last drawing and that will get rid of all those Fibonacci lines for you. Then I'm gonna come through to analysis once more. We're actually gonna look at Bollinger. You can just type in Bollinger like this. It's right here. So click on this. It will give you these options. I recommend just keeping these as they are because this is the typical way that a Bollinger uh, setup would be set up. So you can click apply and then come back to the chart right here. Now, if we zoom in right here, you can actually see a couple of different Bollinger Bands. 
So in the middle, we have this colored in blue line and this colored in green line. These are simple moving averages. We put those on the chart before, so they are doing their job. You can also see some dotted lines though. There's a first dotted line here. This is a 20 day moving average. This is part of Bollinger. Bollinger will give you a 20 day moving average of the stock. So that is the 20 last closing prices as a moving average over the amount of days. You can see that the chart is just in this massive bull territory right now. And so it is trading way above the 20 day moving average, showing us that the chart is extremely bullish. You can also see a couple of other lines though. The first one is the lower Bollinger Band and the second one is the upper Bollinger Band. The chart is trading way, way on this top Bollinger Band. Now, the Bollinger Bands are two standard deviations away from the middle moving average. You can then use those Bollinger Bands as areas of support and resistance for your trades. We can see then that on this incredibly bullish run that uh, Bitcoin has been on, the chart really is moving just on this top Bollinger Band and really using it as an area of support. So it's really just going through this huge bullish run, not even getting anywhere near the 20 day moving average. And actually when the chart does this and has such a strong move, the Bollinger becomes less relevant. But if we just scroll back a little bit when the moves were slightly more predictable, you can see Bollinger was really doing its job. You can see that it was moving up to the upper Bollinger band, coming down, hitting the lower band, moving up again. This is really a sideways movement, but as a day trader, you may look at levels such as this lower Bollinger band for the chart to move up from, and indeed it did do that. Again, this is just supposed to give you a slight overview of how the chart is moving and gives you a little bit more information before entering into your trades. Once you have used some drawings, then just to get an idea of those trades, we can come over to the order book and actually input some orders. So I'm just going to minimize this chart right here. Now, this is the order book, and this is all of the trades that are actually going through uh, on the Bitcoin USD market right now. It gives you an overview of sellers and buyers. Bottom green is buyers and then top red is sellers. And it gives you an idea of the volume of the sellers and buyers at a given price. So right now we can see that the trades are going through here. And then as the price gets further away, then volume increases. This is typical of any market. So this is how it will be. We're just going to get the order book up though. I'm just going to minimize that pricing there. This is the order book on Kraken. So this is the market in Bitcoin. This shows you the price of Bitcoin valued in US dollars. So this is the price that is currently trading right now. All of these red uh, orders right here are sellers. These are sellers that are putting their orders in. So you can see the prices in red here and the amount of Bitcoin that they want to sell. All of these in green here are buyers or bidders. So they are putting their prices in and trying to buy Bitcoin. Bidders, of course, will always be lower than sellers. Sellers will always be higher. And when they do actually meet and agree on a price, that is the price in the middle. You can certainly join the order book here. You can either pay this price if you're a buyer, or you can try and get some cheaper cryptocurrency and put in a price around here, which is a little bit lower, and hope that the price in the market moves down so that you can get your order filled. Let's come through to actually buying some Bitcoin then. So we can use the trading screen right here. And under action, you can choose if you're a buyer or a seller. So let's go on buy. And then you can choose the type of order. We're going to talk about these orders and explain exactly what they are. But firstly, I'm just going to go to market. Market order is when you choose the amount of cryptocurrency that you buy or sell, but you don't choose the price. If you are a buyer, then you will actually come in here and lift these offers of stock. These are sellers right here. So you don't choose the price. So you come right in, you choose how many you want to buy, and then you will take these prices here. So you'll be paying a little bit more than if you went and actually placed a different type of order, which I'll get onto in a second. But you can just come down here very simply and put how much you want to put in. So market order, how many USD do you want to spend? You can put that in right here. And if you don't have US dollars, if you have a different cryptocurrency, you do obviously have to choose the different market so that you know that you're selling the right currency to go ahead and buy the currency that you want. You can then choose the amount that you want to buy. So if I put 0.005 like this, it will enter in how much I will actually need to pay. You can see that the price of Bitcoin against the US dollar is changing all the time. And it is because the price does change every second. And so the amount that you will actually have to pay will change. It will also give you the total amount that you need to spend right here. So this price is the price of one Bitcoin versus the US dollar. Obviously, it just takes the price, times it by the quantity. Once you've got the amount of Bitcoin that you want to spend, you can come right through and just click on review and buy. It will give you all of the details. You can go through and buy that. 
This is the simplest way to do it, but you have no control over the price that you pay for your Bitcoin. It will just give you a price that it can get for the amount that you want to buy. So the thing that you can do is actually change this to a limit order. A limit order is when you have control over the quantity and the price that you pay. So this is all the same. You can come down to the quantity. Let's say you wanna buy 0.05 of a Bitcoin. What price do you want to pay? Well, you can choose this. So I can actually choose 37,000 US dollars per Bitcoin, and it will just take the price times the quantity, and it will give me the total here. You can see though that this is different. Only 37,000, the market is actually trading at 37,865. So my bid for these Bitcoin is actually really, really low. So I won't be able to trade straight away. I can't take any of these offers because I'm too cheap. I can't trade at this price because I'm too cheap. So what will happen is I can come on the order book at a lower price. It's gonna be down here somewhere. Now my order won't go through unless the market drops to my price. If you do enter this order, you won't get any cryptocurrency straight away, but your order will be on the Kraken system and Kraken will keep that in there for you. And if the price does come down to your level, then that is when you'll trade and that will go through as an order so that you actually go ahead and buy the Bitcoin. Kraken does allow you to create conditional clauses for your limit orders though. So you can see this here. I'm going to click on this. You can see some extra options come up. I'm gonna minimize this order because we have this in already. So this is our limit order. I'm just gonna minimize this here. And then we can come and see the conditional clauses. This is actually a conditional close. I'm gonna change this right here to type and I'm going to put a stop loss onto my trade. A stop loss is a secondary order. So we already have one limit order. We said that we want to buy at a certain price. That order will not be traded straight away. Kraken will keep that in the system for us and trade when the price meets our level. This is exactly the same for a stop loss. A stop loss is actually an order that you tell Kraken, hey, if I lose some money and the price falls to a certain level, I want you to sell out of my position and cut any more losses that I may incur. You can then set the price for this stop loss. We have a buy set at 37,000 and this is a stop loss. So this would have to be under this. You could say 36,000. This means that if the price of Bitcoin falls to 36,000, then they will just close out your position completely and stop any more losses. And you can see the total US dollar amount right here. A lot of day traders may use this in case uh, the trade really goes against them and they start losing money and they don't want to be there the entire time watching. So this is something that you might wanna put in. If for some reason you're not trading at the time, it will just do it for you. The complete opposite of a stop loss though is a take profit. So we have our limit order of 37,000. You can also tell Kraken, hey, if my trade goes well, then I want you to trade out at a certain level. This has to be above your buying price. So you could put this in at 38,000. Therefore, if the price of Bitcoin against the US dollar goes up and you make a certain amount of money, Kraken will trade out for you and lock in your profits for the trade. If you are an investor, a long-term holder of cryptocurrencies, then you're not going to need to use take profits and stop losses. Day traders use them if they're entering into certain trades based on some technical analysis. If you're happy with a limit order, if you're happy with the limit order that you wanna place and you have any conditional clauses here, just come through to review and buy. It's gonna show you all of the order details. You can then go through and do that. Like I said, if you have a limit order that's too low, it's not gonna go through straight away, but you can come down here to orders. Any orders that you have in the system, any limit orders and stop losses will all be here for you. Any trades that have actually been executed for you. So if you had a market order or your limit order actually went through, then that would be in the trades option. And then any holdings that you have. So if you actually buy Bitcoin, your positions will all be in this tab for you. So you can see your positions, trades and orders all in this screen. So you can also put in sell orders that are exactly the same. You can have limit prices here at any price. Obviously the sell price would have to be above this price. Otherwise it could go through. So let's put 38,000 like this. And if you're a seller, that would be up here on the order book. And when the price moves up, that could be executed for you. If you wanna set up an account with Kraken, then I will leave that link in the description for you. You can click on that. So you know you're going through to the right place to sign up for an account. Also check out the Kraken playlist on my channel. I've got loads more helpful videos and tutorials on Kraken. Do hit the like button if the video was helpful for you. Subscribe for way more helpful cryptocurrency content and I'll see you in the next one.